This is the United Nations headquarters in New York City. 193 world leaders meet here once a year around the General Assembly to discuss issues that have a global impact. One of the issues that I want to talk with you is about the decay of people of African descent. In our region, we live more than 200 million people, and most of them live in poverty. Our country, Costa Rica, want to leave the, um, the reality of, of those people in terms of development of the people, black people in, in the region. Costa Rica has a lot to say since it placed itself as a regional model nation in fields like environment, education and technology. This is also true about women in politics and Epsi Campbell Barr is iconic for this achievement. In 2018, she made history by becoming Costa Rica's first female vice president of Afro-descent. Among her many goals, there are two close to her heart to give voice to the Afro community and to incorporate more women in the economically active population, not only in our country, but in the region as well. You are a champion of women as female leader when it comes to racism in your country and in the region. Uh, so there has been a lot of progress, but do you think that Costa Rica can, can sustain this progress for years to come? Yes, I think that is very important for my country to walk forward in terms of women participation, but also we are lead, not only in Costa Rica, but also in Latin America, a very important program with people of African descent. For our country, we have a, a huge participation in the Congress. We have more than half of the, of the parliament is our women. Also, my, my president, have the half of the cabinet are women. We are doing a lot of things in terms of women in economic participation. We try to make a, a very important um, effort for women in, in the economic side, but also in the communities. Poverty women who have access for financial and also for microcredits. I think that it's possible to make more not only in Costa Rica, but also in all the region in Latin America and the Caribbean. When other countries look at you and look at this example of, of women who are now participating in government, um, they might say, well, Costa Rica is a smaller country, but how can you be used as an example to other countries in the region where women uh, may not have the same opportunities? Costa Rica make uh, an important role in the international arena. We, we try to work in the OAS. Now a Costa Rican woman is the executive director of the Commission for Women in, in the OAS. That's uh, uh, another way to work with women internationally. Also here in the United Nations but also we exchange our experience with women in, in all the region. Uh, we try to, to push international program, Latin American program with women empowerment. And uh, this is the way that we, we use as country to, to achieve the, the goals in terms of e equality for women in not only in Costa Rica, but in all the region. Verlos hay que identificarlos, no se trata de negarlos, me parece que eh, el plan... Vice President Campbell hecho... Barr is an economist by profession and a social activist. Since becoming a congresswoman in 2002, she has been greatly involved in campaigns and laws against racism and sexism. A granddaughter of a Jamaican immigrant, she is a published author and an expert on social development issues. Would you say conditions generally in Costa Rica are better for women than other countries in the region when it comes to the wage gap or the gender gap or opportunities, business opportunities, education opportunities? 
we have to side. We we are we have um, better condition in access to the education. We have better condition as a country in terms of uh, political participation. But we have uh, important gaps in terms of the uh, involvement of women in the economic of our country. And uh, we are trying to make uh, effort, especially for it, to involve the women in business and in rural economic development. This is our m most important goal now. In the political side, we are made good. In the education side, we are made good, but we have to do more in the economic side for the women in Costa Rica. Education uh, is very important in your country. It is one of the most literate countries uh, in the region, 96% literacy rate. And your country has a new dual education law that implements vocational training alongside traditional learning. Um, some people weren't too happy about that, but what is the importance of vocational training in addition to what people are already doing in school? For the more poorest, they have the opportunity to make both education for work. And uh, we have a very important discussion in our country, but I think that most of the people now identify that it's, it's a great opportunity for the young people in Costa Rica, but it is very important for women, young girls, because they have now the opportunity to not only to study, but have the tools to, to get in the, the work market. And um, I think in the next year, we're going to see the results of the decision that we are made it in this year. What has been the problem or the holdup? Why has that been so slow to change? Uh, is it the culture? Is it... Um the access, uh, what, what would you say is? It's a combination of, of um, condition, the condition is a combination of, of the reality that we face. One is cultural, a cultural issue, because um, in our countries, the, the women are mostly responsibility of reproductive work, but also is a, uh, is the condition of the markets. Uh, the markets, the, the, the women have to face more obstacles to be involved in the economic areas. That's why we have to work private and public. We have to make a strategy with the private sector, not only with the public sector, and also with the women. Listen to women. What she, what they think about the, the general condition of, of the economic area in our country. We, we work in, in all the, the table that we have, uh, the condition that we have, and I think that we can make a difference in the next five and ten years. Costa Rica is also at the forefront of health care. It has one of the top programs in Latin America, according to the World Health Organization. Although, as with most of the region, it remains conservative when it comes to abortion, only allowing it if the mother is in a life or death situation. I know another big issue in your country is uh, for women to have access to uh, reproductive health Care. You mentioned the impact of motherhood, especially at an early age, that can have on women entering uh, the economy. What progress have you been making in terms of... Costa Rica is one of the most uh, the, uh, of the countries in the region that have um, the highest um, rates that the women have access to reproductive um, services. But and in the last year, we... We have, uh, we are working a lot with um, with mothers and adolescent mothers, and um, I think that this is an issue, not the main important issue, because we have a, a very strong health system in my country, um, one of the most important in all the Latin American country. Um, that not that not the most important thing, um, but it's one thing that we have to work 
yes, we have to do more in that side. When you look across now at the young people, is, have you noticed a change? Is, is the future becoming more female? Yes, it, it, the future is now. I think that we are seeing women in everywhere. We're seeing women in business, in politics, in science. We are changing the world and uh, young people going, going to more, more, do more faster than we. And um, I see a positive future, not only for women, but for women and men in the world. Vice President Campbell Barr, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here.